Taylor goes around one player, lays it up and in on the baseline. With a 22 and three overall record, the Lady Lions are having their best season since 2000. A campaign that ended in Philadelphia in the final four. The regular season is nearly over and Penn State is in control of their Big Ten and NCAA title runs. And that has the fans excited. We're back, it's courtside with Coquise, and we're gonna get it started off right away with an inside look at the student part of our student athletes. Our kids are great in the classroom, and a big reason why is our academic advisor, Sue Sherburn. My name is Sue Sherburn, and I work as the academic athletic advisor for the women's basketball team. Milton and Lois Morgan endowed our program and so we were able to have an academic support center for student athletes that provides a comprehensive um, support program to all student athletes. We really pride ourselves in being able to support the student at kind of every phase of development that they're in. Someone asked me just recently, you know, what's the best part? And it's absolutely watching a student come in as a freshman, having maybe met with them as a recruit, come in their first year and watch them at each phase of their development. And then as they kind of move on from here to the next phase of their life to see who they've become. All of the girls that are playing in the WNBA or overseas in the European leagues have their degree and we're extremely excited and proud of that. And I think, I know they are too. It helps us to say you can play at the professional level, but you can also earn your degree and a degree that you're proud of and that you can take with you. Ms. Sue is amazing. She will help you through whatever you want. She helped me find a way to choose a major that was most fitting to me, even though I don't know what I want to do yet. She helps us a lot and we have the high GPA that we do because of her. Maggie, I know she's studying recreation, parks, and tourism management. She talks a little bit about coaching. She talks a little bit about doing her own foundation. I think Nikki's uh, major is really interesting too, integrative arts with a minor in recreation, parks, and tourism management. Mia, she has done a great job here. You know, she will have graduated with a degree in communication arts and sciences, and then she's gonna complete her second degree in labor and employment relations. She also is looking at spending some time in the military and wants to to do you know officer candidate school. Giselle is in criminology. Um, Marissa is going to graduate in communication sciences and disorders. So one of the things that we're really proud of is we've got girls with really diverse interests and I think that really makes for an interesting kind of dynamic among them too. When you're sitting down in study hall and you're studying, it takes discipline. When you're meeting with a tutor or organizing your schedule, it takes self-sacrifice. When you're winning on the athletic side of things, I think also when you're looking at your academics, you feel better about what you're doing there as well. So I think those two things um, help to kind of support each other. When you look at that idea of, of being a champion in every aspect of your life, the girls have really embraced the idea of that from the academic side of things too. And uh, we're on track to have one of our best grade point averages. That's saying a lot, especially with the amount of travel that they do and will continue to do into the postseason. Penn State's Dance Marathon, affectionately known as THON, is the largest student-run philanthropy in the world. This year, Penn State students raised $12.3 million for pediatric cancer. And of course, your Lady Lions were right there with them. The Lady Lions are here today at THON. We can go over to the mini basketball hoop, play with some kids, get them a little fired up. We're very excited. THON's an unbelievable event, and we're just so blessed to be a part of it.
Here's a look at what's trading now in Lady Line basketball. Penn State moved up to number seven in the AP Top 25 poll this week, and they currently sit at number nine in the USA Today coaches poll. With the victory over Illinois on Wednesday, the Lady Lions now push their home court win streak to 19 games. That's the third longest active streak in NCAA Division I basketball. Their next chance to extend the streak comes on Sunday at 1 o'clock, a very special time that combines Senior Day and the seventh annual Pink Zone game. It's a final chance to see Giselle, Mia, Nikki, Marissa and Alex playing the BJC and it's all for a great cause breast cancer with a moving pregame and halftime ceremony and a pink silicon bracelet giveaway it's a hot ticket seats are still available and three dollars of each single game ticket go directly to pink zone more information is available at gopsusports.com backslash pink zone the Big Ten women's basketball tournament will be held in suburban Chicago for the first time when the Sears Center Arena hosts the event from March 7th through the 10th more info is at Chicago March is on Com. That's what's trending now. For more, check us out on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Penn State WBB, or on Instagram at Penn State Lady Lions. Coming up on Courtside with Coquise, a look at Lady Lion defensive dynamo, Dara Taylor. But first, here's three things I bet you didn't know about freshman Candace Agee. Hi, I'm Candace Agee, and here's three things you don't know about me. I have a crazy sock collection, I love horror movies, and I'm addicted to Instagram. I'm Dara Taylor. Taylor, crossover dribble, pull up jumper on. Thomas is good. And you're watching Courtside with Coquise. Courtside! Dara Taylor is no question our team's speed demon. She gets around the court faster than anybody I've ever seen, and she's a big impact player for us. So let's take a look at Dara Taylor's highlights. This is Dara Taylor. This is Dara Taylor. They come down looking to shoot our people. And Taylor just goes right around a couple of Indiana players. Dara Taylor now wide open. Hits the three. Taylor with a steal. Has A.G. with her, lays it up. Taylor will take a three-point shot. Good again for Dara Taylor. Taylor hesitates, drives in the paint. Little fadeaway jumper in the lane is good. Taylor goes for the steal, has it. Took it away from Jefferson, lays it up. And that is big time for Penn State. Now they throw it back out, and Taylor steps right in front of it. It's a two-on-two. -two. Taylor explodes to the basket. Taylor with the pull-up, nothing but net. Dara Taylor had a career-high 18 points earlier in the year at Michigan State, and that, that was her turning point offensively for this team. Dara Taylor, point guard, redshirt junior, Wilmington, Delaware. Earlier in the show, we took a look at our academics through the eyes of our academic advisor, Sue Sherber. So let's check out Dara Taylor and Tori Waldner's favorite academic spots on campus. Hi guys, it's Dara Taylor. We're at the IST building, uh, one of my favorite places on campus, and it's uh, my favorite spot to study. So come on, we gotta give you a little tour. So let's go check it out. Campus is beautiful. It's uh, especially in the fall, it's full of people. Temperature gets not too cool like it is in the winter, but it's awesome. It's kind of big, but it's beautiful. I'm a communications, arts and sciences major, so I have a lot of papers to write, a lot of homework, so let me show you one of my favorite places to study. You got these huge tables, you come, you spread out your laptops, your books, your papers, you got plenty of space. You can come, uh, they got internet here, Wi-Fi, so you can write your papers, surf the web. It's just a nice, different spot than, you know, your library or your room. And one of the reasons why it's my favorite is that you can actually sit here, and you're sitting over Atherton. So you get to watch all the cars, the traffic go back, back and forth. And uh, it's just a really cool spot to study, kind of a secret spot. Not too many people know about it, but that's why it's my favorite. Thanks, everybody, for coming with me to check out my favorite spot on campus and my little secret study spot. Hope to check you at the games this year. Hey you guys, Tori Walner here, and I'm about to show you my favorite spot on campus. It's the Morgan Academic Center for Student Athletes, and let's go check it out, come on. So here we are in the Morgan Academic Center. This is where I spend most of my time outside the gym because I'm trying to get good grades and receive another Academic Achievement Award for Co and the team. The first thing you have to do when you come here is to swipe in and get your study hall hours checked. 
So I just swiped in, and usually if I have math homework to do or chemistry, I come in here to the computer lab, and I get my work done. It's real quiet, and I love it. But my favorite place is over there on the comfy couches. So this is my actual favorite spot in the Morgan Center. I like to sit on these comfy chairs. They're better than the ones in the computer lab. They're softer. You know, might take a nap when the advisors aren't around. But you'll see me sitting here most of the time, studying for all my classes. Right now, I will be studying for chemistry, and this is my handy little notebook. So there's one person I want you to meet in the Morgan Center. That's our academic advisor. She's the best. She's number one, and it's Miss Sue Sherburn. Hi, Hi Miss Sue. Hi. How Good are you? See you go. How are you going? Our team comes in here for meetings, and we talk about our classes. If we're stressed, she helps us out. She lets us vent. But she gets us really organized, and it helps us keep all of our grades up, which our goal for this year is to have a really high GPA for the overall team. Well, you guys just visited the Morgan Center, my favorite place. Thank you for coming and seeing what it's all about. I gotta head to class, but I hope to see all of you guys at a game. Just ahead, Dalia East and me and Nixon go one on one. And today we're gonna ask her a couple questions. And meet the managers. To court side. I'm Talia East. I'm Mia Nixon. Our side, the east at the high elbow. Down low to Nixon. Good high low work that time. You're watching court side with Coach Weiss. Court side. Hey, we're here with Mia Nixon, the four for the Lady Lions. And today we're going to ask her a couple questions. Walner touch pass down low to Nixon. Nixon with the move in the lane, hangs on the rim and falls. What was your favorite childhood toy? I want to say Connect Four, just because it's, it's like all strategy. If you had a million dollars, what would you spend it on? Most of it would probably go to taxes. After that, I would put in the charity. And then after that, I'd probably buy home, the Home Depot organization. What charity would you put some of that money into? Probably Wake a, Make a Wish. I really like that one. Oh, that's really sweet. Yeah. Are you team iPhone or are you team Droid? Team iPhone all the way. So what's some of your favorite apps on the iPhone? I like the Google app, just because we always have these questions. Like around our team, we always ask these questions, and nobody has the answer. So when you want to ask a question, you can go on Google and find it out. Goes down low to Crawford. Crawford making a move on Talia East, who blocks the shot out of bounds. Nice defense by Talia. If you weren't playing basketball, what would you be doing? I'd probably go to New York um, and see if I can get into the stock market. I think that's what I'd be doing. See, another question I have is, uh, you want to talk about your pregame ritual? Sure. Um, I like to get a great nap before I come into the gym. If I don't sleep well, I'm kind of cranky, you know, you don't want to be cranky on the court. I like to get some pasta before we play. I think a nice little bit of pasta, some meat sauce is good. Get in the zone, listen to some music prior, do a little prayer before. I just have a pretty mellow, you know, pregame ritual. What's your favorite place on campus to just relax? Not to do anything, just to chill out, you know? I have to say my favorite place on campus to relax would have to be the hub. Inside the hub, there's, a, there's these big, like, love seats set up by the front window, and I just love to go sit down, you know, throw on some headphones, I fall asleep there. Well, thank you guys for listening to me and me at Rant. Some of the most important people that work with our program are our team managers. They have one of the most thankless jobs. They do a lot of the behind the scenes, hard hat, dirty work, but without them, Lady Line basketball just couldn't function. So let's take a ride with our managers and see how they do their jobs when we go on the road. Hi, I'm Jennifer Montoya. I'm a Lady Lion head manager. Hi, I'm Stephanie Sano. I'm also a head manager for Lady Lions. Some of the duties that I have are to help out with the team, especially on the road. I sit on the end of the bench and I make sure the chair is there so that Coquise during full time the outs is ready. And I also take stats for shot shot. I give the girls their water bottles and Gatorades. I also take time in, time out, so their minutes. And I also calculate their toughness club, which incorporates some deflections, steals, and rebounds. Open look for three by Lucas. On the way and good. Bentley against Printy. Drives off Printy. Off the glass and good. We love being Lady Line managers. My goal as head coach of Lady Line Basketball is to leave an indelible mark and have a strong impact on the players that come through this program. One coach who did this was Kay Yao. She had an amazing impact, not only on the players that she coached, but the entire women's basketball community.
She was someone who made sure that you were the most important person in that room when she was talking to you. She was a parent to many. She had no children, but she had uh, over 140 players who played for her, so she considered those her children. She was like a magnet, you know, you were just drawn to her and what she stood for. Unfortunately, she was diagnosed with breast cancer in 1987. She touched so many lives, and not just in the athletic world, but she went way beyond that scope. Her fight with breast cancer was well documented, and the Pink Zone and the Play for K movement is a reflection of the impact that this remarkable woman had on women's college basketball overall. She already knew the foundations that Penn State was putting in place even before she passed away, which was four years ago. Penn State was one of the grassroots programs to take it and go with it. Their fundraising efforts truly went over and beyond what our expectations were, and where they are today is just amazing. So my congratulations to Coach Washington and the staff there. They are impacting many, many lives through their Pink Zone games. Illinois comes to town and the Lady Lions see red when courtside returns. The Lady Lions wear blue and white on game day, but in practice, we see red the Red Dragons, our male practice team that take it to us every single day to make sure we're ready to get after it on game day. I've been doing this for a couple years now, so they've been getting stronger too each year. So they know me, I know them, so they're not afraid to get into it, and I'm not afraid to get into it with them either. They make us better each and every day by pushing us, literally and mentally. I actually have a chipped tooth right now from Talia East during practice. She just hit me in the mouth and it got chipped, so uh, I end up with scratches, bruises, sprained ankles, so yeah, it gets very physical. We recruit a lot of, a lot of good guys, so uh, it's a competitive process because I'm looking for guys who can, who can help us win and make us better. I actually became a part of it because Mike um, found the tape from the men's walk-on tryouts and I just got an email from him one day and I had no clue what it was about, but I found out and I was all about it. There's a huge competition between the Red Dragons and the Lady Lions. Is it lose to the Lady Lions? Uh, not every day. Lose to the Lady Lions not every, every day. day. Not, every, take day. Down every, day. not every day. Not every day. Oh, that's my squad. I love the Red Dragons. Um, they're a fun bunch. We have probably a group of 20. Nick was by far one of our favorite guys. He was definitely an unsung hero for us. He was really there at the foundational level when a lot of these kids were coming in as pups. When I first transferred here, I was called the Dragons in high school. So I would oh, say, God. I would say like, Red Dragons, let's go. And it stuck with Co. And that's why they're still called the Red Dragons. A little history for you people who didn't know, the Red Dragons no. is from me. Those guys are great. They're an important part of our team. Uh, they help us prepare. In no other way could we replicate that. They do a great job for us. We love them to death, and we can't thank them enough. A lot of times, like, we don't get credit for the stuff they do, but the girls are always so happy that we helped out, and they always, you know, they, they know that we're behind the scenes helping them win games. So we're not on the floor, but, you know, we help them out a big time. I have always said that it takes a special guy to be a practice player. We couldn't be half as good as we are if we didn't have our Red Dragons. We pride ourselves in being basketball players first, and uh, we respect them a lot. They're some of the best competition you'll find at Penn State, so every day is a challenge, just grinding it out, uh, every possession and play, um, getting them better and getting us better. Pleasant evening, everyone, as the Penn State Lady Lions here at the Bryce Jordan Center get set for another Big Ten matchup as they take on the Fighting Illini of Illinois play our game, establish our dominance right from the beginning. We have to establish the way the game is going to be played. Lady Lions on three. One, two, three. Lady Lions! Here's Lucas around a couple of picks, pull up jumper on the way, and that is good. Green holds her ground and forces a wild shot, rebound pulled down by Lucas out near the top of the circle. Bentley makes the move, kicks it to Lucas. Lucas, three-point shot on the way is good. Smith with the basketball. Gets a pick knocked out of her hands by Nixon. Penn State gets the basketball back. 
Now they kick it back out to Bentley. Three point shot by AD is up and good. Bentley with the three pointer. Taylor goes around one player, lays it up and in on the baseline on the left side. Side Godbolt, Penn State going zone. Dara Taylor comes up with a steal. Four against Taylor. Reaches it, takes it right out of her hands. Taylor comes up with a steal, and here comes Penn State back the other way. Edwards ahead of the pack. Great pass from Taylor. Off the glass and good. What a look by Dara Taylor. Lucas drives, goes baseline, puts it up off the glass and good. Nixon gets another rebound. Edwards hits good. Penn State 54 33 lead. Nice first half, Candace. Great job. Great job by the post. You guys gotta attack. Play like champions for 20 more minutes. Yeah. Lady Lions, one, three. One, two, three. Lady Lions! Taylor steals it and lays it up and in. Maggie Lucas ties a season high with her eighth rebound of the game. I just want to give Penn State a lot of credit. Wow, they good tonight. Cookies has done a great job with this program. And those kids played a lot of energy tonight and a lot of life and uh, made a lot of great plays. Give them a lot of credit because they made it happen. Candace comes out of nowhere and gets a block or Nikki or, um, you know, or, or Tori. Walder, another block. Rebound by Walder. I mean, she, you know, was like a one-man defense there at the end of the game, blocking shots. Good defense by Penn State. Nixon knocks it out of Penn's hands. Bentley comes up with a steal. Thought we did a good job of um, making the extra pass, finding the wide open person, um, not forcing things too much. Penn State wins it 95 to 62 over the fighting Illini of Illinois. And Penn State with this win, now one win away from clinching a tie for the regular season Big Ten Championship as they improve their record to 12 and one in the Big Ten, 22 and three overall. <laughs> that was awesome, coming out party, yeah. 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 That's a really good win. <laughs> they're in the third, third place in our conference, so. We got three big challenges ahead of us, different challenges ahead of us, and we have to lock in. Enjoy your day off and, um, Come back rested and ready to go. Thanks, yes. so All right? Thanks, Lady Lions on three. One, two, three. Lady, Lady Lions! Shooting lights out at over 60% for the first time in 17 years, the Lady Lions remain in control of their Big Ten regular season and postseason goals. Sunday is the regular season home finale, Lady Lions Senior Day, and the seventh annual Pink Zone at Penn State. Tip-off against the Michigan Wolverines is set for 1 p.m. Penn State finishes out the regular season on the road with contests at Minnesota and Nebraska. Full schedule, ticket information, news, and more is at gopsusports.com. I'm PJ Mullen. Thanks for going courtside. You courtside. This has been a production of WPSU. I think that was exactly what we were looking for. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> I think it's going to be useful information.